Francis Hahn from TheMarketSniper.com is back again to help us gauge the precious metals markets. This and more on this week's episode of Metal Money. I'm your host, Patrick Vieira. Francis Hunt, welcome back to Metal Money. How are you doing? Patrick, great to be back with you. Glad to have you back. You know, Francis, last time we spoke back on March 2nd of this year, 2022, you, my friend, stuck to your call of a Black Friday sale on precious metals. And I do believe we had it where silver dropped some $5 since then. And gold, a few days after you made that call, it actually went up to 2050 and then shortly thereafter went down to 1785. Is this the fire sale you were referring to, or is it yet to fully play out? Uh, it's the beginning of the fire sale, uh, Patrick, certainly. That would be my opinion. Um, and people that dollar cost average should just keep doing what they do, uh, especially if you're not charting orientated, trying to pick the exact low can be in very much uh, almost an art over a science um, and keep keep averaging in because the uh, I think it was Martin Luther that said, you know, um, uh, the arc uh, of, uh, you know, the arc of truth is lengthy, but eventually it bends towards, you know, a, a form of justice. Um, and maybe it's the other way around. Maybe it's an arc of justice that bends to truth. I've, I've totally uh, forgotten. But the point of uh, being a precious metals uh, investor is, in essence, in the long run, as, as despite the, the shenanigans, the deceptions, and the, and the debt-based uh, system, in the end, uh, real money, uh, real money, not currency, will wins out over over the proliferated faith-based system. Um, in fact, to answer your question slightly more fully, I'm actually going to take you away from metals and come back because it's kind of a bit like <clears throat> you can't just focus on a small area. You can't understand the room by peeking through the keyhole. You almost need to look through the skylight. You need to look through all the windows from the kitchen's viewpoint. Uh, the more points of view, and we refer to this on the marketsniper.com as 360 degree analysis. In other words, ensuring you take in all aspects of a system. And in essence, I'm sitting here as an impassive, uh, almost dispassionate, I would say, observer, trying not to be too belief orientated in anything. People have seen uh, analysis about you know, I believe the, the stock market's going to go up 50, 60 percent from here. Uh, I believe this. That's not analysis. That's something you can't rationalize somebody out of something he wasn't rationalized into. Uh, you have a lot of people saying the debt market is a buy uh, at the moment, buy bonds. Um, again, for me, that is a, a, a belief system because there was no other logic to it. So when I look at the debt market, remember, we are in a debt based system. The true reward for precious metals owners and holders comes with the uh, admittance, the arc of truth and justice bending entirely to you and the admittance of the failure of the system. That is the moment of reconciliation and truth. That is when all the tides pull away and all the naked deceivers are exposed and the people that planned accordingly and that were not fooled by the waterline and look below the level and behind the curtain, that's when they get their reward. So I turn to the debt markets. One of the most common is the 10-year and this chart that we're taking a peek at right now is the 10-year your debt market. And we're getting a ton of people saying, um, oh, this is a great time. This is the yield, by the way, Patrick. So small, very just simple uh, for people that are not familiar with debt markets, because it's not like stock markets, which everybody understands, Coca-Cola, etc. When the yield goes up, the value is going down. There is an inverse relationship. We are looking at the yield that is the interest rate policy. Um, news recently uh, come out of the Fed minutes, uh, three more is the best guess into uh, into September, three more half points. I'm not so sure they would even get that far because the fragility of the system is much higher than people realize. They're still telling everybody what an amazingly strong labor market there is. Meanwhile, the retail consumer is absolutely flattened and dead and buried. And you've had Amazon sell off, Netflix sell off. You've had, you know, Spotify, every uh, every form of retail consumption um, being hit uh, at the moment. Uh, even the, the beloved Tesla uh, is coming in for a lot of downside. So 
regardless of their narrative, I'm not sure they'll get that far, but even adding another half point and another, what's going to happen to the yields? Now, what you probably notice, Patrick, is we're technicians. So first and foremost, rather than believe or have a guess and just stab and marry a view of some form, we follow the money. We ask what is actually happening in the individual chart. So when I look at this 10-year yield and I apply long-standing probability, not truth, not guarantees about the future, nobody has that, but um, technical analysis, what I see is a falling wedge. Um, we're known for putting a splitter in. That's what we do on HVF method. Uh, people want to find out more. They can go to the market sniper. Uh, but we have what we refer to as a three impulse uh, falling wedge here. That is essentially an upside continuation pattern generally. That doesn't mean universally. It's uh, generally on balance of probabilities. In general, you're going to go up, which is why we were we have a, on the big time frames quite a good. Uh, track record of making calls. We've we've warned that there was more potential bareness for uh, the metals. You can see this. Now we're getting a broadening structure, a basing, three marginally lower lows, and an, and a problem to send it any lower. And now we're starting to see the yield break out of what we call a megaphone structure, which is uh, a descending megaphone on a bear pole. Lots of detail, don't worry about it, but the expectation actually as we continue back up to here, and even though we might pull down a little bit, at some point the major next significant move is a reassert to the upside. Um, so this is a falling wedge structure where we expect yields to reassert to the upside. So you might say, well, what's that got to do with gold and silver? Why are we talking about this? That means debt devaluation, yields and rates higher. The market starts pricing in more rates again. That's likely to see a bit of dollar strength return because you've had a little bit of foot off the gas after a very strong dollar. We've called for this dollar dominance on the dollar index many times right here on your channel and on our own channel the market sniper uh, on YouTube. So countless times we've warned that there would be a dollar dominance period from the lows of 89 right the way through, a triggering event on an inverted head and shoulders at 94 right the way through, and we have targets of 111 on the Dixie uh, and potential overperformance. So we're seeing a dollar spike. One of the key things that um, America and the dollar tends to do is it asserts strength when under threat. Uh, I call it uh, the wannabe, um, uh, what's it, alpha chimpanzee or the silverback in the, the monkey troop. It starts to beat its chest and dominate and lean. When the euro was launched um, and it started also to become into physical proliferation, the euro fell from around 160 right the way down to American cents 80. Um, that was a kind of, we're still the biggest guy in town. You've just shown up. You must take a knee uh, to us. This is how it rolls. So with the recent deglobalization events and the unbelievable recent strength of the ruble, by the way, uh, so many people are not recognizing that the commodity-backed ruble has come from 160 and is sub-60. It's in the 50s right now. This policy of actually putting hard, usable, inflation-sensitive natural gas, oil, and gold behind a currency has certainly put a flaw under the weakness in the ruble. And probably fundamentally, by the way, the ruble is not greatly proliferated. There are no wholesale markets built around it. I'm not telling everybody you should go uh, and acquire rubles, but I can tell you, I am very interested in Russian stocks trading at one and a half, two PE that do gas, oil, uh, and even silver plays, such as uh, polymetals that when we were interviewing Rick Rule, he was telling us is a high quality, major silver producer. Uh, and, and he's someone I always listen to in the precious metals markets. Unbelievable experience. So overall, what you actually get, you're likely to get is a little bit of dollar dominance again. Where's the weakness? The Dixie, if it's being strong, where's the weakness? It's the Asian and it will be again the euro coming back down um, and they have their fair share of problems and it's going to be dollar dominance to try counter the system that the chinese russian and maybe the brics nation more largely are going to want to develop for themselves there comes a massive cost with seizing russian assets so overall what are we saying rates going back up again bond debt devaluing um, is our call why did we have this tap out here? Why did we have this 
falling wedge pullback. Well, it's typical of markets. So for that, I must take you out to the bigger time frames. And this ties in with traditional technical analysis again. You can see the first time that we really held deep below this 3% level, this blue line that I put in here is the 3% very key level. The first time was in the aftermath of the 0809 uh, crisis. This is super stimulatory interest rate environment. This breakdown, as you can see, 10, 11, 12, all the way around this entire area is hyper stimulus in terms of rates. The truth be told, our inflation is significantly higher than 3%. And in actual fact, over here, you traded as low as 0.3 uh, on the 10 year. So we have been in hyper stimulatory uh, interest rate environment for an extended period. And what that means is it's been very, very inflationary. It's been very supportive for economies and inflationary. Uh, you can see this rising wedge over here, traditional technical analysis. So I've just shown you a falling wedge generally breaks up. I show you a rising one generally breaks down. Where did it get to? That same funnel level. We call this a funnel. That's the HVF setup. Guys can find out what that means. Um, unfortunately, that's, that's part of our um, method and uh, you, they can go there to refer. But this region, which was all clustered around the 3%, was hypersensitive. And you were resisted there and you were resisted again to an extreme level with the single biggest event probably macroeconomically that has ever occurred, which was the closing down of the global economy in terms of all SMEs, not the oligarchical Amazons, Apples and Walmarts of this world, but in terms of restaurants, nightclubs, um, your local, uh, you know, your local pub, anything you went to that involved small business was crushed during this period. Your taxi drivers were crushed. Your yoga studio was crushed. Whatever the case may be, you couldn't go. And that was deeply demand destructive. During that period, you got your final spill and you get traditionally in technical analysis, you get a final capitulation in rates before the trend change. And this was a final capitulation and the events of March 2020 is the end of a 40 year trend in our view. However, because people have been trained so consistently for so long to always buy uh, bonds on any sign of dip, they always come back into favor. Uh, they are all believers now that they should be bond buyers. And it's our overall opinion that you rested here because it's been resistance before. Traditional technical analysis indicates that. It was resistance before, it was resistance here, and it was resistance here, and you are being resisted here. However, this time, this recovery is a reversal. You had an unbelievable HVF setup that overperformed immensely, and now you are in that falling wedge that I showed you on the lower time frame. So that eventually we expect these rates to go higher, which is terrible for bond as an asset class. Remember, for the old system to die, which all the reset aficionados of divorce and World Economic Forum are telling you is to going to happen, and for the new system to be introduced, you have to kill the old donkey to, sh to shoe on all the inertia ridden people into the new system that you have planned for them, which I'm pretty sure will involve UBI, central bank digital tokens, and many other forms um, of uh, new world communism. Uh, and as a result, as a result, we should see rates go up. The failure of the debt system is going to be uh, the beginning of the end and a lot of contraction of the value of money. Remember that debt is somebody else's asset. It's possibly an asset in your pension. So they are going to introduce their UBIs and all of this on the basis of state pension failure, on private pension failure, all forms of pen pensions are an absolute actuarial nightmare from a demographics point of view. Uh, in terms of an asset category, they're a nightmare. Everything you think you will get out of a pension, you will get one smidgen of what you think as a fractal of a percentage. In short, you're probably going to have introduced a whole new system. And this is now speculating how a reset looks. So where does this leave gold? Initially, during a dollar dominance period, initially, it makes for headwinds initially. The great flipping moment, though, is when the gold is moving up into the teeth of a strong dollar as well. But they want to mask 
the strength of the gold market. So the dollar has to be dominant during this period. But I can tell you, if we pivot to gold, uh, for example, against the yen, and we have a look at it as a chart, which I'm going to do, you will see that actually gold has served very, very well, the Japanese citizen. So if I go here to XAU, JPY, that's how gold has been serving you in the last few periods of months. In 2009, the lows, you could have had it for 60,000 60, yen, and now it's at 235,000 yen. You know, that sounds like and smells like real money. Um, you've got a number of upside uh, HVF structures, including smaller ones. This is obviously a monthly chart, so it's a very long term. We drew this one when we called the single digit oil short. It was a two tiered commodity trade. We saw the relative valuation of oil to uh, gold ounces, and we thought oil was hyper over evaluate, uh, valued, and we called for the collapse to single digits, and we said simultaneously you should be long in gold markets, and that turned into an unbelievable trade, 2019. You still could have got in at 128 on the yen, thousands, not many of us, most of us not in Japan right now, uh, and you would have run 180,000 all the way up to nearly 220,000 during that single year period whilst oil went the other way. You made money on both sides. By the way, these two candles, literally these two candles, which are kind of uh, in technical analysis, they refer to as a shooting star and uh, hammer was the crisis. So you had already made the initial target here when you got this shooting star. You see that very spindly candle in there if I just draw a box around it. It's kind of a shooting star and the one next to it is a hammer. Uh, and that is uh, that literally was your pump and your dump and then your go again. So in terms of the big economic crisis that was literally the stopping of the world economy, and a slaughtering of global demand where lots of people lost jobs, lost income and various things. That was all. That was a shake of the head. It was two months shake of the head and look at where you are today. So gold has, in fact, across nearly all fiats, although most people only ever talk about the dollar price, served its role already. It is already winning and it is the great assets. Uh, at the moment. We had the same trade on against the euro as well. Again, you can see it. That was our squeeze. Again, this is HVF method. I still have the draw. You had done and made that target um, very, very quickly throughout the 2019. You can see the period when this broke and by when it had done target. Mid-20, um, you were done. You, uh, that's your again the events of March that little pullback and then back up and off you go. And where is it today? It's higher it's still higher against uh, the euro, although resting um, for now. So gold is doing exactly what it should be doing. And as others uh, have noted, silver is the second half dominant performer. Silver will be the second half dominant performer. So whilst it lags initially and gold must lead, here's gold, for example, against the pound. It's almost at near highs. I'm going to take the cluster of lines off just so that you can see the chart. This is almost at similar highs. You're barely off uh, major highs here. Um, and again, it's had the same run period to 2019 and 20. So the metals are doing what they uh, should be doing. I could see a little bit of pullback still because of the fear. We're caught in a fear. So your original question, and I'm giving the long form answer here. Your original question is, oh, you know, is this the fire sale? It is. And you should accumulate on a month by month basis on dollar cost averaging, but that doesn't mean you're at the extreme uh, low. I can see further downside in equities on the NASDAQ. I can see further downside potential on uh, crypto. In short, we're seeing an asset devaluation on the basis of liquidity being withdrawn. Don't forget, more, almost more important than the interest rate hikes is June, they start to remove liquidity. Somebody else has to buy their debt. They're going to remove 95 billion. When you reduce liquidity, assets devalue. They're being held up. It's almost like juice in the system. You suck the juice out. Uh, you take the blood out of things. They start to sit down and feel a bit faint. And this is what we're actually seeing across the board. Risk off is a reduction in liquidity. And 
not that gold deserves is hyperinflated, but people have many assets. If they have to pay a rental check they, and they become a forced seller, they will still sell their gold. They will still sell their Bitcoin. They will sell the most liquid things to get by in the short term. So if they create a deeply impoverishing event, much similar to what we experienced in 2020, only it's driven through housing deflating, equity portfolio deflating, uh, job losses, bank hacks, uh, other dramas, supply chain shortages, super high prices on everyday items, so Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you're paying a lot more for your shelter, your food and your basics. Well, that means there's a lot less going into Amazon, uh, movie houses, uh, gym subscriptions, etc, etc, etc. So I think that's where we are. I think we can go lower still. Let's put on the gold uh, dollar chart and then uh, I'll let you unpack some of that. There is still evidence that we can go a little lower. Um, Technically, I would not call a bottom yet on this pullback. Okay, so if, if we're expecting gold and silver to, to still go down a, a bit, somewhat still, what are some of the support levels that you're looking at? Um, it, so one of the key levels that we've spoken of before on the way up um, was the uh, key events that occurred. So I'll just, again, uh, make this a little bit bigger. Uh, there's a lot of analysis on here and it can be a bit overwhelming. Um, when we got to the 1680 level over here for gold, and we're on, just so that everybody's clear, we're on a weekly chart now. Um, when we got to the 1680 levels, this was just prior to the lockdown and all the drama of the March 2020. We tapped out a couple of times there, there, and then there, and then we had a big pullback. That was the events that everybody's familiar with. Then we broke through it, then at a shooting star, and then we rested on top of it. So the 1680 level, the 1680 level is a very significant level on the way up. That was proven and shown to be a significant level. You can see the resistance there. You can see it, uh, how many times it was sold off. Then you finally got through it. Then you rested on top of it. And that was a continuation for upside after the snapback rally. So in short, metals just took a dip, shook its head and went higher as a result of that uh, event. Don't forget that was the event that Bitcoin had almost made 14K and then traded sub 4K on at its lowest and weakest point. Um, then later, uh, again, on the sell off after making a lot of uh, targets on both the Euro and the pound, uh, we expected a pullback. You got a bit of dollar dominance starting to come through. We supported on three separate occasions. So you can see why I am highlighting, and it's a very good question that you ask, how far is far? I would expect to see 1680 to show some degree of support again. That doesn't mean it can't be overrun. Um, but it will certainly have some degree of stickiness. And that doesn't mean we have to go down there either. You're just asking me the question, where's the levels where they might be? And this is one of the strongest. That doesn't stop certain minor levels also playing a role. You can see 1750 wasn't uh, a bad level more recently. If I just highlight it here and put that there, there's your 1750. You've got a bit of bounce support. You made a very long wick here. But you could argue what it didn't hold below, down there for any time. You got a hammer there at the 1750 and you started rejecting earlier over here at the 1750. So you might start with getting a bit of support at the 1750. Already you've seen the 1800s. We've, we were reluctant to stay below it for too long. So the law of round numbers has also been significant there. So a couple of levels for you that would be uh, potential areas of support. This candle right now, however, it's not a great candle. It's a little bit of a fizzle. You've gone up. It's an intraday reversal. Only this is a weekly chart. So at the moment, in terms of the week's performance, we could be having a small weekly reversal. This was a big weekly reversal. And you can see how that turned out. That, by the way, made that target, the HVF method target uh, to the upside from here. And you can see we've drawn that. And that took it very close to the previous, previous high. But the manner in which it's come down shows weakness the momentum and the rate at which it's come down is almost as fast as which it went up if i just again box in the sell-off there is a reason to be somewhat concerned this was a bit of a rug pull you know an absence of bid one two three four successive weeks net down from around about 2k at its highest point 
to sub 1800 you shed 200 plus dollars in an environment of a month uh, essentially that's a slight concern that momentum to the downside and that's why it's the right question to ask you know could we go lower how much further and those are the levels that i would throw to you uh, 1750 uh, 1800 technically round level very significant in short this entire hvf which is uh the squeeze the volatility squeeze formed around that 1800 you can see this blue level that we've highlighted so you know that was a little bit above a little bit below this was the line of ag agreement that it eventually tightened around before doing the run for the 2k and it's come all the way back so it's a return move so that it, it showed a lack of ability to hold the 2k's in the 1900s. Okay, I, I know we touched on this, but um, you know the the U.S. inflation rate continues to be close to a 40-year high, and this is no doubt significant. <clears throat> Excuse me, but why are gold and silver not performing better as inflation hedges against the U.S. dollar? I mean, is the the U.S. day on the Dixie just too strong right now? Are guys just selling off assets? No, that's an exceptionally good uh, question. And I have the answer for you. And people are going to um, need to listen carefully. What we are experiencing is a hyper stagflation, in my opinion. So a lot of people like to think associatively and they'll say it's the 70s all over again. It's never exactly the same. But people like by association to grab onto something that was known and that has happened before. But there are some similarities. The difference is this is at a much greater scale. We didn't have the same level of debt that they have in the 70s. We didn't have a deglobalization, which is going to see your local uh, cost of production be much higher than paying children in India or Indonesia to manufacture items or Chinese production, uh, mass production, uh, and their productivity at much lower costs uh, of income. So what you, you've got a lot more drivers that make this worse. That's why I'm the only one using this phrase and I'm referring it to hyper stagflation. In other words, it's got all the worst attributes of the 70s only to a higher level because most of the sins that existed in the 70s still exist and are higher and more extreme um, in terms of everything. And what that means is, truth be told, you're looking at a double digit inflation. Shadow stats has you at around about 16 uh, to 18% range, uh, while you're being told it's 8%. Uh, percent. Britain admitted to 9%. They're probably at a similar level, uh, in my opinion to the US, only they pay more for their gas, as does Eurozone, and are more reliant on natural gas than uh, America. So they should be throwing out even higher numbers, plus their currency is being clobbered generally, including by the dollar, and they still have to buy their commodities in dollar-based pricing. So they're all lying uh, to varying degrees about the inflation, and Eurozone inflation should probably be one of the highest of developed market, uh, and I include Britain in that. So what's actually happening is why is gold not going up in an inflationary environment? It's because at the same time, they killing demand, squeezing the consumer, de-wealthing everybody and making cost of living so high that actual new investment is very hard to find and price is determined by the person who bought in today, not the long term holder who's already bought. So once you bought and you've shot your load, if I can say, uh, all your capital is in gold, you're a believer, you're 100% in, you've got your silver and your gold stacked. Um, if you're only putting in $50 a month and that's all you can afford, you're not a price maker. The price makers are the people, the often institutions, that are doing almost not-for-profit selling, it seems, at odd hours and major uh, major major amounts, significant uh, percentages of the annual production. This you have to query and that takes you down the manipulation um, route. It's not in their interests for the dollar to be shown to be failing against gold. It's not in their interests that the, the international benchmark of, of precious metals against dollar shows the failure of the system. The enemy to the central banker is truth and gold represents truth. Gold, silver, precious metals represent a truth that they can't bear to look at. Uh, they wince when they are made to see it. It is the mirror of the back at them of all the great deceptions of the fiat system. So it's the last thing they'll want to see have happen, and hence why I say it's a paper price. The physical price is more significant. You should continue to accumulate truth 
in the face of great deception. So that's part of the reason, the manipulation element. The other part is the crushed consumer, because inside a highly inflationary environment, this is not a wage spiral driven where everyone's just getting richer and demanding more salaries and making so much money and buying so much stuff and chasing prices up. What's actually happening is uh, the consumer is not that strong. It is supply shock and deglobalization related price increases, which are having a negative wealth effect and make uh, investment, uh, which is something you typically you do after you've covered all your bases and costs, actually the last priority. And there's very little new money. And the nature of markets is it's the new money that's entering that accepts a bid or takes an offer that sets the price, not the, not the gold that's already bought 10 years ago. Okay, a lot of great points in there. You know, Francis, you, you've given us quite a bit of information. You, you said quite a lot for us to, to ponder here. I want to ask you, though, if you had one candlestick to paint that symbolizes where we are in history, would it be a red candlestick symbolizing fear, uncertainty, maybe inflation, or would it be green, full of hope and realizing that opportunity is there and why? Um, I think in terms of governmental and the people who are pulling the levers right now, it's a very red candle. It's one of the most negative, adverse governmental relationship. I want to highlight, I'm not a negative person. Um, I just like to call things pretty much as I see them and call a spade a spade. Um, you can't control that. You can only elect to control your response to that environment. We are all creatures of the times within which we are born and we are formed. Make the decision to be a pursuer of truth and a man of principle and say, regardless of the environment I am being forced into, I am going to pursue the policy of truth and uh, justice and principle in everything that you can do. Uh, deception eventually is always found out and eventually always fails. You can't build castles on the sand. So keep doing what is right, both by other people and maintaining it. You are defining yourself and you will be a leader. You will be a star. You will be remembered. There will be people at your funeral that will determine you as a person of integrity in times of great deception. And that is a revolutionary act. Be prepared to be revolutionary. Be prepared to be loathed for being that. And gold investment is almost your act of defiance against an era of great deception. It can't be printed by a central bank. It is not extracted from the ground uh, that easily. It takes real effort. It has unique properties. It is limited in supply. I laugh at these asteroid capturers and miners. Good, I think the, the, the fantasy and the, the, the absolute attempts to make this uh, unheralded supply of gold whenever the Bitcoin versus gold argument comes in uh, as, as comical. Um, keep investing in that which is unique, rare, and holds the deceiver's toes to the fire. And that is the commodity. You are trapped between a fear. There are actually two candles going on. You ask which ones are there. And I say at the governmental level, it is a fear trade. They sell you fear. Their product is fear. What you're seeing in the markets is people responding to fear, a reduction in liquidity, fear of loss. This is not a greed-driven environment. This is the fear candle. The fear trade is trying to pump up the dollar, trying to uh, put pressure on the new alternative systems as they are being designed and developed for circumventing the dollar, as I refer to in the euro. That is their product. Your product is trade the inflation trade. Use the big sell-off moments to accumulate the true things that are physical, tangible, and real. They are pushing you into a digital world. They are, they are pushing you into digital money that can be created in the ether. And I say, hold steadfast on the physical and you will get fear trade and then in the rest you're going to get the inflation trade like the energies like uranium but until the stimulus comes the fear trade will dominate so don't put massive lump sum sums right in now zero cost averaging is one of the smartest things that an everyday person can do on the inflation trades which i've indicated are energies and metals um, and uranium is a special one as well because we, we're definitely going to have that credibility gap between uh, green energy uh, and the real world 
providers of energy. Uh, so that's how I would describe the system. There's an option of two, and I'm actually in both those trades. I have to recognize what they're doing and take the money that is offered in that. That is, I am leaning against Asian currencies right now, and the FX markets are the new crypto markets. The USD JPY's move was a seven sigma move. It's absolutely vast, and I don't think it's over. I think we're going to have a blow off strength in the dollar, and actually, they will break the system on that. That will cause, on the commodity sides, a hyperinflationary spike, even though prices might come down. Um, they, they, in terms of their international costs, in a Woku will go unbelievably expensive, and they will force their mark to Bretton Woods. At that juncture, you want to have in your hands, or very close to you, that you control, and counterparty risk is going to be huge. So the less people between you and your metals, and your real money versus their currency and debt, uh, the better. And that that is the game. Stay true to the course, true north. Do not be fooled by magnetic norths and other deceptions that may exist. That would be my undermining message. All right. So governments are painting these red candles with fear and power. They want control. And we, the people, we're painting these green candles. We just want truth and peace. I guess that's, that's how we'll look at it. Francis Hunt from TheMarketSniper.com, I appreciate the time you've given and helping us to set our sights squarely with what's going on. I hope we can do this again soon. Delighted to have been on and anybody who wishes to engage with us or have a YouTube channel, The Market Sniper, and they can go to the website you mentioned. Thank you very much, Patrick. Have a great week ahead. That was Francis Hunt from TheMarketSniper.com sharing his short-term outlook on the metals and markets. As always, please leave your thoughts in the comment section below and remember to keep it liquid, keep it real. And I'll see you on the next episode of Metal Money.